How's everybody doing? Sorry guys, I didn't see my chat box. I couldn't find it between the three screens. Bill, Jay, good to see everybody. A couple new people in here tonight. Awesome to see you. We've got our usual suspects in here. It was funny, there was a group of um, Retired Highway Patrol uh, guys in Texas. I think they're all Highway Patrol, but they're all law enforcement if they're not. But they're, that's the name of their band was The Usual Suspects. <laughs> all right, guys, we are going to jump in south. Stan, Ram, Norman, Mike, Juan, Jay, Greg, Gary, Rodrigo. He's in there. Edith, he and Bill. Good to have everybody in here. No, Stan, they're all um, automatically muted off on these because they get, uh, Paul turns them into a YouTube video later on where people can watch them. Hola. All right, guys, let's jump into this. Um, I'm What I'm going to do tonight, um, I've had a, a, several people this week reach out to me, and I know... Um, Oh yeah, Stan, you're fine. It's automatically muted. Uh, I'm going. Uh, people keep reaching out to me, basically on just grading the trade of what's going on uh, with each one. So tonight, uh, I'm gonna. I've done this like several times, and I'm just gonna do it again because everybody keeps telling me it's what they need uh, to go through. Hold on, just one second. So I'm going to go through each of these. Uh, one hour. Sorry, I have my phone ringing. Turn it on, put it on mute. So we're going to go down. We're just going to start with the ES, and we're going to go through on grading the trade. I'm leaving my video off. Um, I've had some people complain about the audio quality sometimes. So I'm going to leave it off, uh, it tends to save uh, bandwidth on it. So what I normally do, and you guys do know, um, TradingView is working with me on getting .d charts. They should be coming down the pipeline soon. Um, there's a whole handful of other stuff uh, on here that'll be awesome, awesome uh, and help you using our indicators plus just normal technical analysis. But the first thing I always do on a, whatever symbol I start out with, start out with your daily chart. I draw a regression channel and you guys know that I have my settings and I'll show you in here. You just go from the pivot point, whatever way to here and you just drop it on the candle. You can see it's super accurate on here. I swore right here the other day we were going to drop, but we didn't make it out of there. We opened the next day up above and went above that 6.4. Uh, now, keep in mind on these channels, um, on the settings, and there's if you go to my J-Dub Tick Trader uh, profile on TradingView, you can watch all my videos. I do high, low, close divided by three for the channels, and then I do close for the fourth wave pullback channel. But let's, uh, let me show you, for instance, if you were over here and you were doing one of these days, you would drop that same channel. You would just go from the pivot up there to whatever uh, candle you're at. If, if that is that day's candle, you just drop it, bring it out, and there's your channel that, uh, on there. So we, let's take that off. And I was playing around with this this morning when I was doing some trades. All right, so here's this. Now, typically I go down to a 240 
And then that daily channel is the 240 is playing around right in the daily channel. So I'm not going to draw a new uh, daily. I'm going to go down to a one hour. And then on your one hour, we still haven't, let me see here, pretty darn close to, let's look over here and see what that high was. 31.44.75. Yeah, that one did it. it went a little bit higher there. We're still getting lower. Um, so on this one being an hour, since this goes back to the 28th Sunday, we're going to draw a channel from here to here. And that one, I'm going to use the red channel. So I'm going to just click the candle down there. It doesn't matter where you click on the candle because it's doing high, low, close, divide by three. So it's going to calculate it for you. You just got to click it on the right candle. All right, so when we see red, we know that that is a 60 minute channel. Boy, that's a, a clear as day price action uh, channel book, price action breakdown signal right there to go short. Same way with here, uh, right there to go long. So, all right, so we have daily and uh, one hour channels on here. Now we're gonna go down to 15 minutes and let me turn that LA wave back on. The first thing that I do is I look at roller coaster to see where we're at. Are we in the groove of roller coaster? And if we go back over here to Sunday and go up, we had a small one here. This one didn't really hit. So these two, no, no, yes. Massive, that was a, a really good one. Massive one there. Little one there, uh, still really good. Very good one there and a super good one today. It came back, retested it and came back up again. Uh, and then now we're getting another alert here. I don't like, I, I wanna see more of these. So let's go down to a five minute. Scroll back and then that one hour channel will show up on there. All right, now you got some more opportunities in here. This one never hit. They had alerted for it, but never activated. This one, you know, I always tell you on Wednesdays, I don't like taking it until it makes the second step. So I would not take this one until it goes one tick below it uh, when it comes out of here. That I just, every now and then I'll miss one, like say this one that just came out and just kept on going. But then it came back up and went up in there and violated, you know, violated. Still ran 3095 to 89, six, uh, 24 ticks out of there. But that's why I do like this one's prime example right here. The runners usually come back and test the entry and then bounce back off again. Let's look at this runner here. Yep, this one did it too. Came out, activated once then came out again and it actually tested it twice, almost four times before it shot up out of there. So that's why, I mean, I may miss one like this that comes out of there, but I also miss one that fails because it doesn't come back out to do the second, second test. And that's just my own personal rules that I have on there. So we'll go down to five. We look good there. Let's go back to 8.30 this morning. We're gonna go. Eight thirty. All right. So if we look, we want to go back and do the high of the overnight session. So we have that high or low, which it is going to be a low. So we're gonna hover over this candle right here, and if you look over here in the left-hand corner. It is the uh, candle number is right here. So we're gonna, I'm trying to read these questions and do the webinar at the same time but I can't do two things at twice. So we hover underneath there, it's candle number 20,797. So we're gonna go up here, click the Elliott wave on and we're gonna click the sprocket. 20,000, seven, 
97, is that what I said? Let me look over here again. Yep, 797. All right. So this morning, right out of the gate, 7 o'clock this morning, we had a nice multiple L8 ways. You had one that came off the three. This was a three, pulled down in here to a four, hit the fifth wave target, and kept going. Became a longer three. And that was at eight o'clock, eight and eight oh five. So grading this trade, if you were on this this morning and you're grading this, we do a channel from the third wave to the fourth wave pullback. And if you go to my JW Tick Trader profile here on Trading View, you can watch the video on how to set these as standard. Just click the top of that three to the bottom of the four. And because it's so close, when you get on the lower minute time frames, your channels are not going to be super big because the waves are not. Uh, and this fits the seven to 10 candles. You have what, three, four, five candles. That's a nice one uh, and a nice retest of the candle that came back. Touch that channel perfectly. And if you look here, that one hour channel that we put on here, look where the first candle out of here, look what it touched. Touch that channel, pulled back, closed on the green. Next candle opened on the 6-4 moving average, came down, tested that fourth wave pullback channel, pulled back up. We look down here, we have higher time frame green bias dots for going long. Our oscillator, 535 oscillator, we're going to do a Fibonacci retracement on it. Same way with underneath my profile on JW Tick Trader, I've got these, how to set the defaults for these. You're gonna go down here to your wave four, the zero line, you're gonna move it to the high of the three, which is right there. We didn't get a crown on that fourth uh, pullback. Uh, typically you won't on a, two, three, four, five minute chart because they're moving so fast, they just don't have enough time to crown. Uh, but we didn't violate it. So going back up top up here, we were outside of the channel, or uh, outside of the fourth wave pullback channel. One reason to go long. We're above the six, four moving average. Two reasons to go long. Green bias dots say long. Three reasons to go long. 535 oscillator did not violate. Four reasons to go long. Now over here, if you look at your stochastic, it crossed over, but it was not pointing down like it does one, like over here. And you didn't get an arrow saying that it's crossed over. We just kind of went sideways right there. I wouldn't say that that's a reason to go long. I'm gonna say no, one no, four yeses to go on there. Now let's add on the bits. All right, now bits actually got you in over here at 720. It crossed over, you're above your point of control dots and your cyan crossed over. Now on, and it's kind of hard to see here, here is our cyan line. It came over here and basically retested that 6-4 moving average line. Let me turn off Elliott Wave so you can see it. You can see the cyan came up and then it basically, oh, I lost my Elliott Wave. That's on there. But that blue line, you can see the arrow, blue right here, blue right here. It retested it and then took off. So there's five reasons to go long. You're above your point of control dots, six reasons to go long. And this even came down and touched your point of control dot, went long. So we have one reason down here, your stochastic did not say, it It didn't say absolutely yes. It didn't also say absolutely no either, but let's just say be fair, one no and six yeses. You're gonna take that trade and you're gonna take it outside of that center channel line and your 6-4 moving average, which was 
right there at 3095, went all the way up to 3108, so 13 points. Was that 50 some ticks? Not a bad, uh, not a bad trade right there. Came back, did not cross the yellow moving average line there that uh, stayed above it. Came back out, but that that's one on grading your Elliott wave on there. Now, not having a late wave, if you just used bits, you had a signal here on bits going down. Let me look real quick on the questions because I've got like, you guys got a bunch of them on here. Do, do, do. Would, uh, would you end the trade when price breaks above the lower channel? Um, if you're, I wouldn't go long if it breaks below it like this right here. I wouldn't go long, but we came back and I think that's uh, yesterday's mid uh, right here and we tested that and then bounced off and went. And down here, we've got some action of crossing over to go. And let's see. I'm glad to have you too, Edith. How do you get the time frame menu horizontally? Do, do, do. Are you talking about this red uh, trend line there, Edith? Yeah, you'd have to be talking about that horizontally if it's that. Uh, that is over here. It normally says trend line is what the first one, when you first open it up, trend line is automatically selected first. Just click that arrow go all the way down to the bottom and it's regression trend. And then you can set it where you want it. I don't need one, so I'm gonna take that off. Another one, let's see. If the orange is above, is that a short? Yes, that is a roller coaster short. The green line is always your entry, the recommended entry. And then the orange is the stop loss on it that and you can see this one barely hit down here i wouldn't take this one and uh, the and this is why it's so important guys to do your channels because you need to know what's going on in the higher time frame or like the bigger time frame picture so on a one hour that you're looking at this chart and it's like you get an alert for a possible roller coaster down but you were you already tested it. The alert came over here. You already tested the center channel line. It came back up and rejected it. Came back again. It closed below it. Next one opened up, wicked down, and it did not go past this first entry right here, that first line. Like I always tell you, don't go, but don't take it past there. And look, it didn't take it. Came back up and then violated it, went all the way up. Now, BITS gave you a signal right here. It crossed over, cyan crossed over the yellow, pointed control dots, you were above it. You were above the uh, yesterday's high. You've got your uh, bias dots were yellow, 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 boom. And you got a green right on that same candle where the cyan crossed over. Your 535 oscillator went crown really, really low. And then the very next, that candle there that powered out of there was a smaller red and then you had a green right after it. Um, that candle that powered out of there, you also had uh, arrow that your stochastic crossover. So stochastic's one reason to go long. Your oscillator's getting smaller, running out of juice, two reasons to go long. Your bias dots went from the pull down to green, three reasons to go long. Cyan crossed over the yellow, four reasons to go long over your point of control dots, five reasons to go long. And then if, let me zoom in here, if you wanted to wait even more until you're above that 6.4 moving average right there, because it came out, came back and retested it right there, seven reasons to go long. They got out of there. And that's just, so this is a good way to show you how all three of the indicators work together that on some trades, they're all working together. And sometimes 
roller coasters not given the uh, so we're not getting the all the things we need to take the signal and then same way with Elliott wave it may not be a necessarily a trending day uh, but you know you only got an hour to trade so if you got in say you say you opened up your computer at 1135 today and you're like hey I've got two hours uh, I can trade till 130 and then I gotta go so you open up your chart, you go to your daily, you draw your channel on there like we did. So my channel will show back up up here. Oh, I'm on 24 hours, that's why. You do your daily, you went down to your one hour. We're gonna click here. So we know we're in that groove. And then we went down to fifteen minutes. We can see what's going on on there. Five minutes, and that's where we had that Elliott wave earlier. So having that channel, you kind of know where you're at. So you come in at eleven thirty. is right here so let's just say you turn on your computer right here you've already done your channel so we know where that the horizontal line is going up so we're in a slow trend up we're looking at the chart we come down cyan retest that yellow line right there that I believe was yesterday's high we look go over there or actually I think that was the open and uh, we retest that. We're just bouncing along. There was a trade right here. The cyan uh, crossed over right here, and this was worth 3106. It was only worth four points, but you're on a five minute chart. So 15 minutes, 16 ticks is uh, not a bad little deal. Cyan crossed over. Let me look over here. So you came in at 1130. Start looking at your chart. Your first trade that it gave you a signal on it was this one right here at 130. That crossing over on bits. So if you don't find a trade in here to take, you don't take it. Like don't try to force a trade. Yes, that middle line is a support and resistance, Trevor. Uh, roller coaster is different than Elliott wave. Uh, roller coaster is basically in the, in the grand scheme of things is measuring the third wave of the Elliott wave, the longest one. Uh, but they don't always hit because you just, you know, I mean, there's no magic, uh, pill for figuring out the market. The market's going to do whatever the market's going to do. It just gives you an educated guess of where you're at and what's going on. Let me make sure I'm on top of this. No, this is trading view, Julia. Uh, Paul uh, sometimes does a Ninja Trader one on tomorrow. I believe it's 11 uh, that he does a webinar on it. Uh, Ram, you just don't take the trade. That uh, when you have uh, when you have an opposing signal, like say, I, I mean, I don't. Let me see if I can find one. Well, for instance, this one. Uh, roller coaster saying go short. Bits is saying go long. And there's no Elliott wave in there. Uh, we're in a corrective wave. So Elliott wave's not giving you a clear signal. Bits is not giving you a clear signal. And roller coaster is not giving you a clear signal. You don't take the trade. Yes, Edith, uh, that is what I'm going over right now. That uh, the first thing that we did was roller coaster. Let me turn off Elliott Wave and let me turn off bits. The first thing I did was go over roller coaster, and that's what roller coaster is. That, uh, and when you get roller coaster, it comes with a 20 some minute video, 
and it tells you how to follow these. Uh, basically, your green line is your entry. Now, this is the suggested stop loss. It typically, if you look to the left, it's usually the pivot of the last move. So the bottom of this orange right here, if you look right over, is this pivot point right here. That same way with this one here. There's your stop loss, that's recommended. Now, if you only have a $1,000 account or $5,000 account, obviously that recommended stop loss, you need to, that is just a recommendation. We do not tell you exactly what you need to trade because we can't by law. You have to go and look at your uh, account and risk management and figure out what is in the best interest of you. Typically the general rule of thumb, no matter where you go, people say don't risk more than 1% on one trade, no more than 5% of your account balance in one day. So if you lose that much, you call it a day and you know, you got money to come back and fight another fight. Uh, but on roller coaster, and now I was, if you, I was telling you earlier, uh, Edith, that I typically do not take the trade until it breaks that first step. That's when it goes. Now this one was even more because it was on the center channel line. I wouldn't have taken this one right here, even though it was a good one, because we're in the we're running into that center channel line. And it did, if you look on here, we hit a center channel line to the tick and bounce back down to the entry. Now, this entry back to here, having a little doji hammer bottom, whatever you want to call it, uh, I probably would have taken it right here, uh, especially, well, that uh, you still had every reason to go long here. I mean, it still go, it still did go up. It wasn't a lot, 3081. It's only four points, but it's 16 ticks come out of there. I just wouldn't have taken this one running into a center channel line. I just don't mess with the center channel line. And you look, look how it respected it. Bounced over there for one, two, three, four, five, a half hour, 25, 30 minutes. Came back up and bounced off it again for another 25, 30 minutes. And then the next candle opened up and we shot straight down out of it. Now this red line right here, now on a trading view, um, the way the coding is, we can't put a hash mark but on TradeStation, NinjaTrader, Thinkorswim, there's actually a red hash mark line. And it would be like, um, let me see if I can just, I'm just gonna put one, wouldn't be that big, but it would be a red line. Let's change this to red real quick. but you would have these little red hash marks right here that are your stop loss. So as the trade's moving down, this little mark will move down with you and you basically just move your stop loss to that recommended stop loss. And it just keeps going down and uh, it keeps you in the trade until the very end and then it stops you out there. Now, granted, if you're watching your chart, and you're looking down here and you see the oscillator uh, getting close to crossing over, you know, you get an arrow over here that's crossed over. I'm not going to wait for it to keep going up, you know, 10 more ticks before I get out. I'm going to call it a day uh, in there. But that is how roller coaster works. Now, one of the things that you're going to do after you draw that one hour channel line because drawing a daily channel line and then trading off a five or 15 minute chart uh, is going to be harder. A one hour gives you an accurate of what's going on with the current trend. So you want to make sure that roller coaster is in the groove. So going over here on a five minute. Now this one just hit, so we're not going to count it. This one did not. So we have one no. Yes, yes never hit yes we'll say two no's so we're one two we're three and two four five six four and six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 
we're going to say that one uh, didn't, so we'll just say 7, 13, 14, 15. So you have 15 yeses and 7 or 8 noes. So it's running about 50% on this current trend from right here. And this is from the 26th on. Now, so let's go down to formats. So what you want to do is you want to look for one that is in the groove of going down here. So when if I look back and five signals have not hit right or they're real small like this, this little one right here, I'm not going to take it. It's not in the groove. Now this one, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a small one. I'm not going to count that. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Not going to count that one. 17. So you have 17 good ones. One, two, three. I'm going to say four losses. We'll just count that as five. This one never hit. So you have five losses and 17 wins. I mean, that's a pretty good ratio. Uh, that's a 70 plus percent. Uh, so this one is going pretty good in the groove. That uh, Now you can go down to three minutes. Look at the chart on a three minute. How, how are we doing inside of that channel on a three minute? Is it in the groove? So one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 yeses, one, two, three, that one never activated. I'm gonna say four losses. Let's just say this one was a loss. There's five. I wouldn't have taken that one because you're on the center channel line. So 17, 18 wins, five losses. So this one's running in that 70% range uh, also. Edith, they come in, they come in handy. You can uh, private message me. Uh, you can email me. Um, and I'll put my email in the chat box. Uh, and I'd be happy to do a Zoom with you and show you one-on-one. -on -one. That, and that's what this is today on using roller coaster. Okay, so now let's say that you are on this four minute, okay, and you get a signal for, well, let's, let's do the one that failed, okay? Instead of me trying to show you the ones that work, let's just do the one that failed. This one here failed. All right, this was originally a alert to go short right here that never hit, and it was right on the center channel line. You'll get a lot of these on the center channel lines, and when they run, they usually run. Look at this one. This one was off the bottom. It alerted when we were coming up to the bottom of the channel, came back, retested the bottom, and then took off from the moon and went, all the hell it went, and it stopped you out there, but it kept on going, but it Went up to 3102 from 3076. So that's a hundred plus tick move right there. And that's another hundred tick move right there. But let's say you have this right here and you don't know whether or not you should take this or not. Let's turn on bits. All right, bits. You've got this roller coaster move here. Bits actually had a trade right here from stochastics crossed over down here with that arrow. Oscillator, eh, it's kind of, uh, I would say no, uh, a reason not to take it is right there. Stochastic did cross over, high time frames are long, and your cyan crossed over right here. So you could have taken that trade there at 3106, took it up to the entry at 3111, that's 20 ticks that bits got you in here that if you didn't have bits, you wouldn't have known to take that move. And if you didn't have the channel in here, you wouldn't have known of that it was retested, it tested the channel, the center channel line there, tested the center channel line there, took off, tested it again and took off. This time it broke through it and went through. And you look, we're fighting to get down to the bottom of the channel. 
So, so this channel has been very accurate on doing it. So let's go back to this one again. So your bits got you in there going up. So there's a 20 tick move. Roller coaster entry and never, I would have never taken this because you just had too much, uh, it was running out of juice. When you have this many wicks and they're all stopping about the same, it's running out of juice. But we come back down and this powers down, cyan crosses over, zoom in here a little more. You're below the purple, but you can barely see them, pointed control dots right there. So below the point of purple control dots, one reason to go short. Cyan cross over the yellow, two reasons to go short. High volume red uh, candle, not a, uh, a low volume one, high volume, three reasons to go short. Your bias dot went from green from the candle before to yellow, four, uh, four reasons to go short. Your oscillator kept getting smaller and smaller. If you look right here, smaller, smaller, smaller and your stochastic crossed over, you got that arrow down below. Now that arrow does not mean automatically go short. It just means that your stochastic crossed over for the right atmosphere for the market to probably go down. It's just uh, an odds enhancer. So you have five reasons to go short right there. And that was, that was a decent one right there at 3107 and you drop down to 3104 for a quick uh, 12 minutes and pull 16 ticks, 12 ticks, uh, and if you ran it all the way down to there, it was still a good trade. But having that, framing your chart on that higher time frame channel, you knew when it comes down here and it wicks below that channel line and comes back up, my stop loss is always at that channel line is where I put it. I don't wait around for this thing to see if it's gonna retest and then come back down. We come down to the channel line, I'm gonna put my, stop loss right on it and take it. And then look what I did. Wicked up, took back off again. So now here's another uh, move to take right there. It's uh, everything was again for there. Cyan crossed over, above the point of control dots, higher time frame said go long, they're green. Oscillator was getting smaller. Stochastic crossed over. I mean, you got five, six reasons to go long and taking that long, that was 3107, even if we got out right up here, 3116, so nine, 36 ticks out of that one. And then back over again here, wait, crosses over. What do we got right here? Boom, next candle, we got a high volume red candle going short. Hot, the higher time frames went to yellow, which is indecision, lower, lower, lower on your uh, 535 oscillator. And then boom, right here, you got your stochastic crossed over arrow to go short below your point of control dots, cyan crossed over. You got five, six, seven reasons to go short right there. And that is 3110 and ran down to 3100. So there's 40 tick move in one, two, three, four, 16 minutes, 40 ticks. And you could just play this all day long. Now, when you start getting chopped like this, this is the market trying to just take your money right here when it's doing this pop, 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 pop. I don't play the chop that I want a nice clean break that like straight down, not these little ones like this where they go up and down. Plus, if you look down here, crossing over, uh, it's indecision right here. Even though it's say it's going short, you never got a red dot at all uh oscillators all over the place you did get a crossover here uh just too much chop going around in there but i wouldn't take it so let's turn off roller coaster turn off bits and turn back on elliott wave see uh gary you would go short let me show you here you go short where it crosses over, but you want to, and then I like to have Elliott Wave on there so that I know like this short right here when it crossed over, all right, if you took this one, I, I personally would not, there's just too much chop going on right here, going up, down, up, down, up. And this, the market's just trying to screw you every one of these. When you start seeing big long wicks 
up and down, that's the market makers taking your money. They're just feeling out your stop loss because what did everybody do? They're going to go long at this pivot right here. So everybody went long and look what the market did. They took you from 3,103 and dropped it to 3,100. That, what is that? 12 ticks. What do most people use? 10 tick stop loss. You know, it's not a rocket science. They just want your money. Same way back over here. Here's your pivot. Most people are going to go long right here. They stayed in the trade. Oh yeah, it's going. And then poof, they just whip it back down. Just a couple more ticks past that one. Take your money. But no, uh, when it crosses over, I like to be, you need to be below the purple, these purple point of control dots. You want to be below those and below the 6-4 moving average if you have Elliott Wave. That uh, it's just extra confirmation. Below 6-4 moving average, below the point of control dots, cyan crosses over. Typically, you want to see, uh, if it's been green going up, you want to see a yellow you want to see uh, a yellow or a red. Red's even better. Uh, like this one was a good one for red. And then stochastic, you want to see that. So there's five reasons to go short on that before you even turn on, you know, roller coaster or anything else. So let's go back to Elliott Wave. And we, we haven't had any more um, waves on here, guys. That uh, it's, it's doing the wave count right now but we're not trending um you know it, we are in an uptrend but there's just nothing going on on the l8 wave on a on a this is a four minute let's go to 15 minutes 15 minutes we're going to isolate from let's see today's the first i like going down the pivot now Paul will go the ye yesterday's higher low, but on a 15 minute chart, you're not going to have very many candles um, going over yesterday's higher low. So I like to go on the trend of where we're at of going off there. And that is candle 21,190. It's this pivot point right here, 21,190. And you'll see it right here on the left, 21,190. You click the sprocket, 21,190. Takes about seven seconds and we got a couple of trades here. Let's go over, let's go over why this one failed. That, all right, right now it shows an ABC correction and it this was a one, a two, and this was a three, and then there was a four here, 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 and then it failed. Once it, uh, it just didn't meet the requirements anymore. But let's just say that that three was there and the four was right here. We're gonna draw our fourth wave pullback. All right, you would not go long in this situation until you got out of that channel going up, okay? Now, we go back here. If this was the four, we would do a Fibonacci on that four right there. Go to, whoop, I clicked the wrong one. We do price range. Whoop. Clicking all over the place, guys. All right, 91.40. So when the four was right there, I'm gonna click right here, go to the high of the three. We didn't crown out of there. You can drag this down so it gets right on there. Uh, we didn't crown out of there, so you're good there. You got double shorts going down there. You did get a stochastic crossover right there to go long. But if you look, we were not above the 6.4 moving average on that alert right there. We did go out right there, but the oscillator is going down. And like, if you turn on, uh, I don't have it on here. I took it off. Um, if you have your volume on there, uh, you can kind of see like what's going on. 
on here and it's just going sideways guys that i mean you can see it and as it's going you don't have you know it's popping out of the channel to go long but you look down here just cast it's going down it's going back and forth between green and yellow that it doesn't know what to do and even when you pop out of the channel here now you're below the six four moving average and once it finally popped out of the channel right there we had the oscillators coming down now when this moved down here and let me remove this when it moved down there you got to draw a new channel from the top of there to that new fourth wave all right now you can't go long until you're outside of this channel right here now when it starts getting all of this chop 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 in here that i don't take the trade i want a nice clean in you know like paul says seven to ten candles and it comes out and it goes when you get this many candles inside of the uh chart i don't take it that i i want a nice Queen Elliott wave out of there. So no no trade for me. It's all over the board right here. It's going short, going long. Uh, just nothing lines up. Great, Gary. All right, so let's, um, let me go to a different, let me see. I've covered Elliott wave, I've covered bits, and I've covered, covered roller coaster. What time is it? We got 15 minutes off. Um, why don't you guys name, name something else besides the ES, um, uh, and I'll, I'll just start over on it like brand new. Uh, Edith, just email me if you can that, uh, and then I'll get a hold of you. CL. All right, let's go CL. All right. So. Let's take off Elliott Wave and let's go to a daily channel. Woo! No, it's 420 was not a good day for people. <laughs> Negative 37. All right, so if we look in the grand scheme of things. I'm, I really don't even need to do a daily channel because it's oil's been so jacked up. Um, but let's do one. I'm going to take it from the pivot to the current price. And it's respected it pretty well. Let's. Uh, it's actually done pretty well in there. That. Uh, has it touched the tops, but we've been circling around off that uh, regression channel pretty good on it. Let's go down to a one hour. And let's see, we have the 30th. And there's our daily channel. All right, so our current 60 minute channel, theoretically you have one going down here, you have one going down there, one going down there. Uh, you could turn around if you did, you could draw new ones. For instance, when this one was going down, all right? This is 11 o'clock, click the top of that. Let's just say that you were on this, this uh, candle right here. I I isolated off this candle right here, and it drops this. So basically, if you were trading that oil trade while you're going in there, after this right here, because we dropped the channel based on this one. Next candle opens up, wicks out, comes back. There's your entry point to go short right there, uh, just from the channel. But you come back down into there. Let's turn on. Basically, you're going to take the long outside of that channel going out of there. And when it did bust out of there, look at what you, you got a arrow down here. Your stochastic kept getting, or oscillator kept going smaller and smaller. Stochastic crossed over down here. Bias dots weren't there yet. Let's turn on uh, bits. 
And lo and behold, look what bits picked up. It crossed over. It's actually, that's kind of funny because bits actually stopped on that center channel line and then came up. Uh, so your bits entry would be right here at 3810 because the we busted through that yellow line next candle came up wick back down next candle came back down look where it, re it retested that point of control dot so you're above the purple point of control cyan cross over yellow you've got stochastic down here saying go long there's three your 535 oscillator smaller 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 and so it got you in at 38.10. And then you got your first green bar of your oscillator after that. 38.10, and then it ran all the way up. But you know, you're gonna get out once it does a couple candles right here in a row. 38.10 to 39.24, that's uh, 1200 dollars $1 move on that one right there. Same way over here, it crossed over. Cyan crossed over the purple control dots crossed over the yellow two reasons go short we look down here oscillators getting smaller 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 three reasons get short stochastic uh crossed over the 80 four reasons get short and i mean there there you go you got hands uh cyan crossed over the yellow you're plus that's a midpoint um main dot right there too so You've got four or five reasons to go short right there on it. And then same way when it came back down here and took off again going up. Now those channels that I was telling you about, you can draw multiple ones and each time they're going to tell you, they're going to get you same way with this one. Take the high of the point here, go down. Let's just say you got in right here at this candle. All right. We know in the bigger time frame, this is the daily chart. We know we're getting close to the bottom of the daily channel. We also know that we have not been going up and testing the tops of the channels. We've been cutting it short on all of them. Like, I don't think we've touched it on any of them. Nope. Just when it first started the channels. So more than likely, you know, we're just guessing. More than likely, we're probably not gonna hit the bottoms. It's probably gonna go on up. So let's zoom back in. You just click this little button right here. So you're on the current trend right here, uh, and we dropped it right over here. So if you were live at 20, 100 hours, you drop that channel, and we pop out of it, go down, retest it, retest it again. We look down here, you have your, these yellow boxes down here are the false breakout. That's telling you, do not go long, 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 boom. That's telling you that it's trying, it's a false breakout that it's giving you a false signal. And you look, it came back down again, all the way down, down here. And then you got your green arrow on the next one saying it was clear to go. So stochastic crossed over, one reason go long. False breakout went to okay to go long. Your oscillator went shorter, shorter, shorter. Three reasons go long. Now you did have your yellow dots. Um, they're not, we didn't get red coming down. You did get a green dot way up here and it kept on going. So we're not gonna count that. So we have one no, three yeses. We're outside of the channels four. Now click on your bits. Cyan crossed over, four reasons to go uh, long. Above the point of control, five reasons to go long. You're ready to go on there. Then if we add on roller coaster, roller coaster caught this move right here, guys, running down and then turn around and took the move up here going up. So bits got you in early at 38.12 and roller coaster got you in at 38.78. So you got 62 cents, uh, what is that, 620 bucks um, on one contract that bits got you in early. And then using your channels, framing the higher time frame of what's going on, 
we knew we busted outside of this downturn channel going up a uh, one hour going up and we know the uptrend's going up so you have lots of reasons to go long uh the channel deviation is two and minus two ram that uh and then on trading view you can't do this on all of them uh it doesn't have as many options as trading view does but on my regular channels on every channel i draw is high low close divided by three uh some people now except for my fourth wave pullback i use close and it's because the close makes it a little bit bigger channel um, and i like to go long outside of those on the fourth wave pullback can you look at wmp is that, is that a stock trevor I'm guessing it is WNP. Let's go to stocks. WNP. All right, so we're on an hour. Got a nice roller coaster move that hasn't, I don't think it stopped you out yet. No, it did. Stopped you out right there. Um, now it alerted you on doo -doo -doo -doo, March 9th on that one, but let's go to a daily. Boy, that's a spotty one all over the place. I wouldn't trade that thing if you paid me. Uh, just has. I don't know what the volume is of that, but it doesn't look like it's a lot. Uh, yep, I wouldn't, Trevor. I wouldn't mess with that. If, in my personal opinion, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't mess with it. And if any of you guys have seen on Twitter of my famous uh, social media stalker that keeps following me around, telling me that uh, roller coaster doesn't work on forex pairs, for the same guy that also didn't watch the training video used it for three days or less, never asked for help, and then is now complaining. Uh, yes, it does work on uh, Forex pairs. And he said it didn't work on higher time frame swing trading. Yes, it does. You can look through here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I never take a roller coaster and listen to me when I say this. I personally myself never take a daily or a 240 and really and truthfully not even an hour roller coaster signal because too much can go on in 60 minutes in one of those candles. A tweet can come out, the feds could say whatever, some new coronavirus thing can pop up. They're just like this right here where it's like, hey, what's going on? And it takes off down. Uh, you just um, you just never know. Now you go down to the hour, and even on let's go down fifteen minutes. Let me turn off bits and go back over here. You know, and it, like I said, he said it didn't work, and I'm like, I don't know what forex how much it moves per tick, but I know that's a big that's a big ass move. So is that one, that one, that one, that one. Uh, there's some smaller moves in here. If you follow my advice of taking the second rung out, it, the winner, 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 even the smaller ones are still winners. Uh, I'd say one loser there. Winner, 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 even though the small one never activated. I wouldn't have taken it until the second rung, so to, that never even activated for me. Winner, winner, winner. I, it's just, but it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work when you don't follow the directions. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, I finally had to just block him. I just got tired of it. I'm like, I can only argue. Um, I can only argue for so long. Uh, common sense. And if you notice in all my tweets, 
I offered to personally help him over and over and over, and I have never gotten one email, one phone call, nothing. Uh, and I even emailed nothing. That uh, and I try to help. That uh, and you guys know I spent two hours uh, with somebody on Saturday to help them. Um, you know, it, just giving my time to help you guys be successful. All right, guys. Um, Bill, which indicators are best for swinging and long trading? Man, it's uh, I don't do long trading, so uh, I'm not the best guy in the world uh, to ask that. That would be Paul. Uh, I would say, in my opinion, if you're doing long trading and you're gonna do, let's say, I don't even know what you would, what you would trade uh, to be a stock. Paul really would be your one to do that. Your Elliott Wave's gonna give you an idea of what's going on. All right, Bits is going to give you an idea of what currently is going on and where it's going. And then Roller Coaster is going to give you those breakout moves that you can take advantage of. And a lot of these are, let's see, what time was this one? Oh, this is a daily. So this was the open. So on April 6th, Roller Coaster gave you a signal to go long on April 6th, but it didn't hit. Market opened on April 7th went maybe a couple cents negative and then eighth, ninth through the, what would that be? Through the 28th. So 20 days divided by five. So that's a three week move. And it went from 23.40 to 26.56. So, I mean, $3 and 10 cents. Uh, I mean, if you got, thousand shares of that 26,000 and you made 3,000 bucks. That's not a bad, uh, bad little trade. The only thing with your swing trading ones, you got to be in it for the long haul because you may have ones like this where get, it goes down, everything's looking good. And then the next, you know, the next day that it opens, it gaps up and you're already, you know what I mean? You, you got in it over here that, uh, that's the only problem, uh, in my opinion, for the long term, but uh, at, reach out to Paul about that because he's really good. Uh, watch his things on Thursdays, and it, we've got a lot of videos on the Trade the Fifth uh, YouTube website. Um, and then, uh, Bill, I would also I would join the Five K Club. It's like sixty bucks a year, uh, and then five bucks each time that you attend the live. If you don't attend, it don't cost you anything. Um, and you can always watch them afterwards and Paul trades live as it's going. So, uh, he, that would definitely be, I think a good thing for you to cheap and, um, give you live training. Edith, all the indicators come with the videos that come with it on how to use it. And then we have tons, tons and tons. If you're on trading view that I have here, um, you can, oh, thank you, Juan. I appreciate it, man. Um, you too, Bill. Edith, if I have tons of underneath my J Dub Tick Trader, which if you go to, let me just open up. Let's go to Trading View. If you look up my name right here, get my smiling, bald head and face. J Dub Tick Trader, and if you look underneath here, I have tons and tons of videos on how to set up your charts. Um, lots and lots of uh, different videos on here on how to use them. That uh, I I got plenty of them on here for you to look at. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good night. Uh, I hope you all learned some new stuff tonight. Uh, follow the rules that uh, if you don't get five reasons to take the trade, don't take it. And if, if the indicators are giving you three different things, don't take it either. All right. Good night, guys. Thank you all.